One of the major agendas that Nigerian lawmakers need to find a resolution for is a case of insecurity in the country. On Tuesday, the National Assembly resumed plenary and top of the agenda was a growing insecurity in many parts of the nation. Due to this latest development, the Senate has summoned service chiefs to appear before it next week and proffer lasting solutions to the widespread insecurity in the country. The invitation followed a motion titled Spate of Insecurity in Nigeria, sponsored by all 109 senators during yesterday's plenary. Joining us on the morning show to discuss what the solutions lawmakers are looking at to fix this issue is Ned Nwoko, Senator representing Delta North Senatorial District. Good morning, Senator, and thank you for joining us on the morning show. Good morning and welcome to. Well, Senator, well, the spate of insecurity in the country is a source of concern. So it's not surprising to see that the Senate uh, is looking at this and passing resolutions and all of that. But before now, you had proposed a bill that the way forward is for Nigerians to carry firearms. That if everybody has access to firearms, that will check uh, uh, the threat of violence, it will check uh, illegal uh, arms uh, trafficking and all of that. Do you still stand by that position? And is your position one of the uh, uh, resolutions by the uh, Senate uh, now? Because your bill was supposed to pass first reading, second reading. And why would you say all of us who uh, carry arms? Uh, wouldn't that be a prescription for complete anarchy in a country where there's so much anarchy already? Well, um, thank you for having me on this morning. My bill is predicated on the lawlessness that is currently uh, pervading the nation. We all have experienced it, or we know somebody who has experienced it, somebody who has been kidnapped by armed robbers or by, the, by kidnappers or by some form, form of mil, uh, militants, um, herdsmen, and, and all of them. We have really come to a point in this country where we must make an honest admission to ourselves, which is that the security agents cannot really protect lives and properties as enshrined in the Constitution. The common man is left to his caprices, uh, if I may use that word. Um, the common man is not able or does not get any kind of support from the police. The police as a force is ill-equipped, the police is ill-funded, the police is not capable of discharging those onerous duties. I mean, that is a basic fact. I am in the Senate Committee on Police Matters, and I can tell you that we do not have the number of policemen that we need to secure Nigeria as a country. We do not clearly. Um, and uh, the, the military, on the other hand, I mean, we've been spending billions of uh, Naira over the years buying uh, warplanes, buying uh, different arms and ammunition in the name of fighting terrorism and um, other crimes. But they are, again, also not able to deal with the issues. So a lot of money has been spent, a lot of lives have been lost, and we are nowhere near uh, finding a solution. Look, the idea of a bill to enable Nigerians to carry arms and defend themselves is born out of desperation. The fact that 
people do not have the kind of protection that they need. Let me tell you what happens in UK, for example, um, in, in terms of emergency. You know, if you, assuming you have a, an emergency and you, and, you, and you pick your phone and you dial 999, not 080 number or 07, no, no, just 999. And maybe you, that would, you, you summoned your last uh, breath to dial 999 and you don't speak to the person on the right end of the line, what happens is that within five, 10 minutes, you will receive three emergency visits from the police, from the ambulance services, and from the fire brigade. Because at that point, they wouldn't have known which one you needed. So three of them will converge at the place where the phone is located. But in Nigeria, I mean, what stops us from having 999 number, 111 number, 88 number, you know? And it's one of those things that we just need to address. Um, how do you help the people, ordinary Nigerians, to reach out to the security forces or emergency services in the event of trouble? Now, you know, talking about my uh, bill, um, it is not just about people carrying arms. You just don't go into a, a, a shop and buy arms. No, there are um, measured measures that are being proposed, and they are very, very strict measures. You know, like in America, um, uh, every citizen has a right to bear arms, as enshrined in the Constitution. In Nigeria, it is not so. So what we are trying to do, what I'm trying to do specifically, is to have a system where people who are willing to carry arms are given the opportunity to, to, to so do. Now, the first condition that must be met is that every local government area must have a gun school, gun shooting school. And so if you want to have a license to, just, just give me some minute, please. It's important you understand this. You know, so if you, if you want to have a, a gun, the first thing to do is to be trained, to be trained on the use of arms. So there will be, in every local government area, shooting schools run by former military officers, owned by them. Now, when you have been certified to have go, gone through that and you are able to use uh, arms, the next step is for you to go to your, your king or your emir or your oba who will give you a letter of certification to confirm that you are from that particular place. Then the next thing for you to do is to go to two doctors. Those two doctors must, must certify that you are mentally fit to bear arms. Then you go to your local government uh, uh, chairman who must also confirm that you are from that particular local government. And then you now go to DPO of that locality. The DPO must confirm that you do not have any criminal Line record, your, that you're not a wanted person. What you have just and, described. And, 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 and Senator Moko, let me, let me just come in very quickly Hello? because of our time. Can you hear me? Let me come in because yes, I, I, want I, ask, I, would, I want to I, ask I, based on, there. yeah, just I, before I, you get there, just before you get there, I, I, I want to ask a question around what you've already said because you've said a lot and it's important that we're able to digest it and also, you know, ask a few questions with regards to some of the proposals we've made. Now, it sounds like you've given a lot of thought to your bill, in, including the implementation. And we hear you about local government, we hear, but the more you speak about it, the more we see in the number of obstacles that would challenge this bill. The first instance is this um, uh, saying that they have to be responsible, law-abiding Nigerians. It's, how do you judge that? Number one, we're already grappling with security agencies themselves, agents themselves not being able to handle their weapons and use them um, indiscriminately in some instances. How would we then vet or check Nigerian citizens who then have access to these weapons for, to not use it indiscriminately as well? That's one. Number two, who will fund these various steps or where would the funding come from? These various steps, because you said that the license money would go to um, supporting the police, not to implementing, because that money is already accounted for. 
where would the funding come for the local government you've talked about that and is it the current local government system we have at the moment and then with regards to the training the things you've mentioned where would the funding come from so it sounds like on paper a, a considerable uh, bill but in terms of the implementation it looks like there'll be a lot of bottlenecks and it doesn't seem very plausible i'd like to get your thoughts on how Funding, number two, checking who is going to hold um, these weapons. Are you not concerned that we have not even sanitized those who are of, you know, officially allowed to hold them with indiscriminate use? How we, we will do then check that among citizens? Well, look, you're, you're asking questions as if you're not part of this country. There are many issues here, issues of insecurity. That was why when we resumed on, on Tuesday, all that we spoke about, all that we talked about, all, all that frustration that we felt as a Senate was all on insecurity. You know, so it doesn't matter about the implementation, it doesn't matter about the funding, those things will be taken care of, we take care of ourselves as we get there. Look, if you or Ruben wants to uh, have a, a pistol, for example, or an AK-47, for example, all you just need to do is to know that you, you want it. And then you go to the shooting school. The shooting school is not free of charge. The shooting school is there also to make money, uh, but to train people. So anybody who wants to go there should pay for the training. This is what is done all over the place. It shouldn't be a problem at all, you know, as to uh, funding. You know, the shooting schools will be run, licensed and run by former military guys who have the capacity to understand about guns and to train the will-be users. So there's no question about the, the funding or, or, or the implementation. Um, but as I was saying before, no, you know, I by the time you the concerns are around done with... The concerns around putting weapons in the hands of citizens, when even in the hands of police officers, oh. we haven't been able to regulate that. I mean, look at the American situation. They are grappling with that, and they have a I, more I, established I, 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 institution. I, I understand. You know, look, in America, they, they, they don't have these checks and balances. Anybody who is a citizen can walk into any gun shop and buy any gun from a machine gun to a, 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 a pistol or whatever they, they desire to have in their collections. You know, but here, look, you, we, we, are, we are left with nothing. We are, we are left with nothing. So the average Nigerian has come to the end of the that What they need is basically to have the ability to defend themselves. Let me tell you, so you, if you don't trust Nigerians, law-abiding Nigerians to defend themselves, then what are you talking about? Already, already we have over maybe half a percent of the population with illegal arms and it's growing by the day. It's not getting less. I, the only alternative is just to allow them to continue, continue acquiring arms illegally whilst denying the citizens who are credible, who are, uh, you know, mentally fit to carry arms, the opportunity to, to defend themselves. Let me give you an, an instance. In UK, it is an offense to carry machete or uh, knives or such uh, offensive weapons if seen in the street. I mean, people carry um, bow and arrows in Nigeria. It's an offensive weapon. People carry machetes here. In every household in Nigeria probably has a machete or a cutlass or some pen knife that is more than three inches. In UK, it's an offense to be caught with anything like that, and you go to prison for it. In Nigeria, it is not an offense. But do we go about killing ourselves with guns, with, uh, sorry, with machetes, with knives and cutlasses? No, no. So we should get to the point where we become responsible citizens. I mean, majority of people in Nigeria are responsible. There are many doctors, many lawyers, many presenters, uh, broadcasters, and, and, and others you know, who have the desire to have some kind of weapon to be able to scare away the will-be attackers. If you are licensed to have a gun and those bad guys out there understand that, that you have a gun in your house, the likelihood that they will come to your house to harass you, kill or rape 
is almost nil. They, they, they wouldn't do it. Even as a deterrent, they wouldn't do it. So if, just imagine a few days ago, uh, some children in a kitty state or so were kidnapped. They were kidnapped because they were not protected. They were kidnapped because they were, there was no adult with them who was armed. You know, just, I mean, you can't allow that to continue. If there's a gun license and every school is meant to have um, uh, people who are armed protecting them, uh, let me tell you that you will have all these kind of stories. There are many vigilantes in Nigeria. Okay. There are okay. many other uh, sec security companies in Nigeria. But the fact is that they're not even allowed to carry arms. So you make it possible for those companies to be armed instead of just standing uh, around okay. buildings and offices okay. and, uh, and um, okay. homes okay. without okay. arms. If they have arms, those, no, look, if they have arms, those people will be your first line of defense. Okay. But okay. they are not. Okay. So what's the point of having them all over okay. the place? Okay, Senator so, Woko, so, I mean, I, <clears throat> I totally get your argument. And uh, it's because of the matter on ground you want this. But the counter argument has always been about you don't want to give guns to a frustrated Nigerian and all of that. But I think part of your bill, if it's there, what will be the checks before issuing these arms? Secondly, what's the process like of getting a firearm? Do you have a firearm? What process did you go through in getting that firearm? Or if you don't have a firearm, what's the process around getting a firearm as we speak today? Thirdly, will your bill do anything as regards getting well, firearms? Well, well, well can, can I? Can no, I, can hang I, on a minute. Let I, me just finish. Let me just finish. Can just I take your questions. One. There's, there's one well, more. If you, if you throw go, go ahead. Too many go ahead. Questions, go I will ahead. Remember all of them. Uh, go ahead. Know? Just go ahead. So, 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 so let me just let me just deal with the with the first two. Okay, and you can ask more. Uh, you know, look, I was just maybe you were not listening to what I said about the checks and balances. The first thing is about the training school to be established in every local government area. The second thing is that there will be a uh, licensee must go to various places to get some kind of certification, including from the local government uh, chairman, uh, from the king or the emir, uh, must get a medical report from two doctors, must go to the DPO and get uh, uh, confirmation that they are not wanted or they are not uh, in court for any criminal matter. And then, with all these documents, you go back to the same driving, uh, same um, uh, shooting school, and present them with your documentations that you are now able to get those arms. But they will take about a month to go back to those bodies and confirm that they, they actually issued those documents to you. When that is done, you can go back to them and then get your arms. And let me say this: every of those. Uh, shooting schools must also have uh, a forensic expert. And um, what, what is the point of a forensic expert? Let me tell you this. If a gun is licensed to Mr. A and, and, uh, um, and or a, a murder occurs, a murder occurs within the vicinity. Now, the forensic expert should be able, through autopsy and the rest of them, get the bullet that was used in the killing of that particular individual and link it to a particular uh, bullet or bullets that were issued by the licensing um, schools. Because these are things that have to be done as, as a way of checking the usage after the acquisition of those um, guns. So yes, do I mean, you understand what I've just said? So, 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 so if a gun is used, a bullet is used, you, you, the forensic experts who should be able to identify where the gun came from through the so, so, um, so, licensing so, so the problem um, I have, bodies. Sir, sir, with due respect, the problem I have with your idea is the practicality of it. With due respect, it is not practicable in Nigeria. You see, all of that state you have just stated, the processes, I can do it if I'm corrupt. I can get somebody to get me a shooting school license. I can get all of that. We have a low amount of forensic experts in the country. That's the point I was trying to make as regards checks for the system. And that's why I asked, oh, probably if you have a fire, what was the process you went through? And if you don't, what's the process as it is pervasively now? Because all of that problem, all of that check you talk can be circumvented with corruption. The last question I wanted to ask is, will your bill or is your bill thinking about anything my, as regards my friend, you, you, guns you in the hands to, of non-state actors? You, hold on, you seem to have 
you seem to, you seem to have given up on Nigeria. You cannot give Nigerians an opportunity. I mean, you, 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 just, you just condemn everybody. You think everybody is corrupt. You think the kings are corrupt. You think the uh, DPOs are corrupt. You think uh, the doctors are corrupt. You think uh, the chair, local government chairman are corrupt. You think anybody will just go there and pay the money and, and get those certifications. No. We must start to lay a foundation for growth in this country. You know, so if you want to get a, a license, let me ask you this. Would you want to own a gun yourself? Would you want to be able to defend yourself if you're attacked by armed robbers or by kidnappers in your own home? Would you want to be able to dis defend your children and your wife if you are attacked? I mean, you're telling me, no, you, you, you don't want to uh, handle a gun. If you don't want to handle a gun, that's your problem. Then don't handle a gun. But there are many people out there who want to be given the opportunity to defend themselves. I so I speak on behalf of those ones, not, of, not for people like you who might not want to have a gun, who, who, who are vulnerable, but you want to remain vulnerable. Uh, but, you, but you know that the police and the military cannot defend you. So what, what, look, as I said before, out there, out there, there, there are already a proliferation of arms in the hands of, 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 of kidnappers and, and armed robbers and bandits. So you, you just want them to continue? But you know also that the, the other alternative is, is to keep funding the military, keep funding the, the, the police, but we're, we're not getting anywhere. Because before you and me, over the years, you know that in this country, that that, that system has failed. The system has almost collapsed. Look, about three months ago, my uh, SLA in National Assembly was kidnapped. Three months ago. Up till now, he has not been found even though we made a report to the police and to the DSS. And there was just one demand for 10 million ransom made to the wife. I gave the police the, uh, the phone number. Obviously, the police ought to have been able to track the police, uh, the, the telephone, whether the phone is switched off or not switched off. You know, but this is a system failure. And up, up till now, nothing has been done. Senator. And keep making phone calls to the police. I keep making phone calls to, to the DSS. Nothing has been done at this level. Nothing has been done. When I moved my motion, I, I also spoke about having CCTV across the country, but Senator. particularly in, in, um, in Abuja. You know, Senator. so nothing has been done. And so you just tell me that we, we should just wait and uh, to be slaughtered by those who are illegally armed. I mean, that is... That is, that is absurd. Okay, Senator, yeah, we, we've spent some time interrogating your proposals. But next week, the Senator has now resolved, the Senate has now resolved that uh, the service chiefs should appear before the Senate. Well, is this just an attempt by the Senate to show that, oh, the members care? Because really, are you optimistic that the service chiefs will come there and say something different, something new? Are you convinced that they probably have new ideas about what to do, other than to come and say they are working on security architecture, they are taking a second look at kinetic and non-kinetic, and then the usual story about how they are underfunded, how they need equipment, and how they need uh, the Senate to approve more funding for them. Is the Senate not just, you know, just showing, showing off to just, to show that they are doing something, whereas they know nothing will come out of that uh, interaction <laughs> with the service chiefs. Yeah. Well, well to, to an extent, um, you are probably correct, but the fact is that we are all concerned. Whether you are a senator, or you are a House of Rest member, you are a Nigerian, everybody is concerned. But what do we do? What we, what we have to do is what we are trying to do, which is to raise awareness um, with the uh, service chiefs and the D DSS and the rest of them to make sure that things are stepped up. But we, I, I mean, look, personally, I don't have much hope that uh, anything different will come out of it. Because even if you give them all the money that they are asking for, along the line, you're going to hear that some money has been diverted. You're going to hear about the, the complicity of some of the officers. You're going to, you're going to hear that. Um, that is why I am opting for the other alternative, which is to allow people to defend themselves because of the failure of the system. You know, uh, so we are doing what we are doing as a Senate, and uh, we can't do any more than that. 
other than carrying guns ourselves to, to defend Nigerians, you know, all we can do is to budget money as requested, which we've done sufficiently in the last um, appropriation uh, uh, proceedings. But as, as to whether anything new will happen in Nigeria in the next uh, two years, three years, I doubt it. I doubt well, it very much. So Senator. we have to come to, come, to, come, come to the reality that what we need now is to give the people the opportunity to defend themselves. Well, on that, that note, uh, Senator Ned Nwoko, we would like to thank you very much for joining us on The Morning Show.